As if fall already wasn't the best time of year with chilly and hooded sweatshirts and perfect weather, at least for us in the Midwest, Apple, of course, pulls through as they usually do in September with more goodies, as they did this week with another iPhone and Apple Watch event. In this video, I'm going to go over what I believe are the top takeaways for both devices that I'm excited about this season. If interested, stay to the end and I'll go over what I'm thinking about getting and why. Let's start, of course, with the iPhone 15 Pro. And as a side note, the regular iPhone 15 also got some of the upgrades I'm going to mention and other features that I'm not highlighting. But in the interest of time and sort of to have fun and geek out at the most advanced models, I'll be covering the Pro version for this video. Now, it's sort of a no-brainer that every year we are going to get new phones with some combo of a little better speed, cameras, and so forth, which is great. That's just part of the natural evolution, and I'll say mostly what we saw this year. Still, there are other exciting updates, and here are a handful that I'm looking forward to. First and foremost, we are finally moving to USB-C. This has been a super old request from Apple fans for a while, and I am in the same majority. Essentially, anything and everything I am bringing into my life right now, whether cameras or flashlights or whatever the case may be, if it is rechargeable or needs a data connection, it has to be USB-C. Interestingly enough, though, not though super surprising, with other devices moving to USB-C, such as the AirPod Pros, you can now use your phone and a USB-C cable to reverse charge things like your AirPods or Apple Watch, which is pretty cool in a small emergency. Yes, you heard that right. While it wasn't a top highlight today, the AirPod Pros are indeed getting USB-C. Back to the iPhone Pro, the next feature is the titanium case. It is no doubt that phones have been getting larger and heavier over the years, and the switch to titanium is going to shave 19 grams from the stainless steel option prior and still be stronger than before. Some rumors have it that it may still be easier to dent, but to me, I don't care if it can dent easier or if the brushed titanium finish can hide fingerprints better versus the polished stainless steel, as I am going to case the phone probably like most people. So if I can save 19 grams in weight, I'm in. We also get another neat feature, and that is the action button, which replaces the ringer switch. I don't know if you're like me, but when is the last time you ever turned your ringer on? I think for the majority of people, this will be a welcome change. If you still want to be able to turn your ringer on and off, that option hasn't gone away. But for the rest of us, we can now customize it to turn on a flashlight, start a new voice memo, or run a shortcut. This follows the Apple Watch Ultra and was indeed a good move to give us the most flexibility with our devices. For the camera, we are going to get a full utilization of the 48 megapixel sensor without having to shoot in RAW. For the iPhone 15 Pro Max phone, there's going to be a 5x telephoto lens at a full 120 millimeter focal length. Combine that with the f2.8 aperture and you can expect to get some stunning distant photos with nice bokeh, which is that blurriness in the background of the subject to really make your photo stand out. Finally, with the cameras, we see better low light and HDR capabilities, which again, has been a constant improvement each iteration, which people are going to love. Moving to the Apple Watch, we now have the Apple Watch Series 9 and Apple Watch Ultra Series 2. Both screens get bumps in brightness, which is going to help a lot in those sunny situations. But on the flip side, Apple is also allowing their screens to go down to one nit, which is a unit of brightness, so that you can get the watch to go ultra dark when, for example, you just want to watch a movie and not be distracted by the watch on your wrist. What I am most excited about is the new night mode on the Ultra Watch. Now, using the light sensor on the watch, the screen will automatically dim into this red night mode if the lights are down, which will help save your night vision and keep your watch from becoming a big distraction. Lastly, on topic of displays, the Ultra now has widgets that go to the very edge of the display that can show you things like altitude and depth if you happen to be doing your casual dive in the ocean on a Sunday morning. Switching gears, we now sort of have a first in the Apple territory, and that is with gestures for the watch. Now, I know raising your wrist towards your face to activate the screen and such is sort of a gesture itself, but now Apple is raising the bar as they just announced a new double tap feature. Imagine you're carrying in groceries or for whatever reason you only have one arm free. Now you can respond to messages, answer a call, pause music, and a whole host of other features with a simple tap tap of your fingers. And this is definitely a feature I'm looking forward to trying out. On the tech side, we see a new internal chip, the S9, which is going to make both watches faster. And speaking of chips, there is a new ultra-wide band chip that is going to make finding things like your iPhone even easier as well. 
Instead of just the ping noise to your iPhone, you'll now be able to see how close you are in the direction of your phone, which is super awesome, as I happen to use this feature in its current state sadly too much around the house. And frankly, that's pretty much what the Apple event was all about. And on top of that, we had some other highlights like new roadside assistance via satellite for your phone, which is built in upon the SOS functions they had from last year. They upgraded iCloud plans that allow up to six or 12 terabytes, which is up from two terabytes currently. New iPhone cases, such as their fine woven case that will replace their leather cases, which I'm sort of sad about as their leather cases have always been a favorite of mine. But I understand, you know, the need to move on for environmental reasons. They've also upgraded Wi-Fi on the pro iPhones for faster speeds and less latency and much more along with all these different products. As promised, I said I would share what I'm looking forward to purchasing this month, which is the iPhone 15 Pro with 256 gigs and likely in blue titanium, along with the Apple Watch Ultra Series 2 in an Alpine band. For those who know me, I generally upgrade phones every year. Today I'm rocking an iPhone 14 Pro with 256 gigs, and this has honestly been the perfect phone. Reason one for the upgrade is I, I just like to get the camera upgrades as I think photos are very important to me. Uh, we have two young kids and I like to capture them and all of our adventures. So any extra quality I can squeak out is important. The next reason is resale value. Every year I have no trouble selling my old model for a decent price. And if I'm just a little bit lazier, I go ahead and trade it in to either Apple or one of the other third party sites. And this has always worked well for me. Lastly, USB-C. I'm tired of all the different versions of cables. As I said earlier, I need to get everything in my life standardized as much as possible and shed these extra cords. On the watch front with the Ultra Series 2, you know, I lead a pretty active lifestyle and I have scratched up my Series 6 up pretty good. For me, I'm looking forward to the much more durable Sapphire display along with increased battery life and a brighter, more data dense screen to allow me to get the most use out of my device. So in summary for the Apple event this September, I think it's yet another good year of updates. So what are you most excited about? Share your thoughts in the comments below. And if you are buying any Apple goodies this round, note that below as well, as I'd love to see what people are thinking about. Hope you enjoyed the video. And if you haven't already, consider subscribing to get more useful Apple content in the future. Thanks and have a good day.